how do you reset slides in Storyline 360? We're going to be looking at the built-in options within Storyline, and we're going to reload some slides using JavaScript. Each method has its advantages and potential drawbacks, which we'll discuss as we go along. Let's start with a practical example. I have a question slide here, and I want to add a button that, when clicked, reloads the slide. Since this slide is an exercise slide, the first thing I'm going to do is not actually a reset so much as giving the user the option to answer the question again once they submit an incorrect answer. I have the option of letting the user try to answer the question again either for a set number of times or for an unlimited number of times. Here's how to do it. Go to the Design tab. Under Attempts, you can set the number of tries. For example, if we were to set this to 5 attempts, Storyline will add a Try Again feedback layer, which will trigger when the user answers incorrectly. This will give the user 4 chances to retry the question, with the 5th being the final attempt. Selecting Unlimited here will allow for infinite retries, which means the user won't be able to continue unless they get the correct answer. The catch with this method uh, is that it doesn't actually reset the slide. It just allows the user to answer the question again. Now you can tell the slide isn't being reset by looking at these signs. The seat bar doesn't reset to its initial position, entrance animations don't play again, even though shuffle answers is on, the answers stay in the same position. The second thing we're going to try is uh, resetting the slide to its initial state. Uh, to do this, I'm going to go to the slide properties and I'm going to set the behavior when revisiting to reset to initial state. Then I'm going to use the replay button on the seek bar if it's enabled in the player settings or create a button with a trigger to jump to the current slide. And this method does indeed reset the slide. It reshuffles answers, it replays animations. However, it has a major drawback. If you have a variable that's incrementing on timeline start or some similar trigger, the variable will keep incrementing with each reset. Here, I have a trigger that adds one to my variable when the timeline starts. If I click either of the reset options, the variable will keep increasing. That's because Storyline doesn't do a full reset of the slide, it just jumps to the slide again, and that's an important difference. It's like clicking the next button and the next slide is the current one, so we're basically entering into a loop where each time the slide reloads, the timeline starts, and each time the timeline starts, one is added to my variable here, which is something that I don't want to happen. Now let's explore how a reset works in JavaScript, how we can reset a slide basically with JavaScript. I'm going to add this trigger to my button here, which will execute some JavaScript when the button is clicked. And the code I'm going to execute is this. It's just one line and this code refreshes the entire page, which basically means it resets everything. Now, when I use JavaScript to reset my slide here, the value of my variable stayed the same, even though I had the trigger to add one on timeline start. So it's like exiting the e-learning course and then opening it back up again. Uh, and as such, uh, how this reset will happen depends on how you set up your player settings. You can check that by going to Player Settings, Other, and Browser Settings. And here you can basically do one of three things. First one is Prompt to Resume, which means that when you click the Reset button, it shows a pop-up asking to resume or restart the course. You can select Always Resume. When you click the Reset button, it automatically resumes from where you left off. No pop-up, no nothing. And you can also select Never Resume, which means that when you click the Reset button, it restarts the course from the beginning and you will lose all progress. This is the most important thing to keep in mind when using this code. It refreshes the browser window, not a specific slide. So it refreshes your entire project. That's why 
how your module behaves on reloading depends on the options you choose under browser setting. This method of uh, resetting a slide is also useful for when you have GSAP animations running on your slide. For example, here, if I reset using the jump to this slide uh, trigger, the animation breaks. And this doesn't happen if I reset using JavaScript. So if you have GSAP uh, animations on your slide that involve positioning elements, uh, there's a chance your code might break when resizing and the elements will be thrown out of place. Now, refreshing the page is one solution to basically keep the elements in place when resizing. So to refresh the window on resize, add this code to a timeline start trigger. This is the code. This will basically add an event listener that will listen when the uh, user resizes the browser window. And when it does, it will refresh the page. So in conclusion, I guess there's no perfect way to reset a slide and storyline. Uh, each method has its own uses. The attempts feature is good for simple question retries. The reset to initial state works for basic slide resets, but it can generate a lot of bugs, which I have encountered before. And, and we also have the JavaScript method, which provides the most comprehensive reset, but requires a lot of caution since it can reset your entire project if not, if you're not careful. And it also, for example, it requires you to give up on the pop-up that prompts the user to resume or restart the course. So you need to pay attention to that. All in all, I recommend choosing the method that best fits your project's needs and complexity. And that's it, I guess. Uh, if you know a method that only resets the content window without affecting the entire project, please share in the comments below. Thanks for watching.